Mr. Ambassador, I wonder if you can give an overview of, of your description of the, the myriad threats that Afghanistan faces. Uh, among the things that uh, have been discussed is uh, Pakistan's increasing uh, use of Afghanistan territory uh, for its purposes is it's known as strategic depth, uh, particularly among uh, Pashtun extremists to ensure that uh, it has some breathing room in its, in its fight with India. Uh, to what extent do you see this increasing? I, this is more of an old uh, strategy that Pakistan had. We are working uh, very hard to convince our friends in Pakistan that the best, um, even strategic depth that they can have or is by having a stable, uh, powerful and prosperous Afghanistan is their friend. There has been some uh, positive movement in moving toward the direction where the two countries and the two nations will work more closely. If there are some fears, some phobias that are, have existed in our part of the world, uh, they're outdated and, and we are working very hard to convince Pakistan that the future of Afghanistan and Pakistan is in, in good relation, in fighting together in sincerely extremism and to providing for prosperity for both nations in order to fight extremism. Are they doing enough to control their side of the border? They are not doing enough in, in fighting extremism overall. We, we had the very unfortunate incident of Lal Masjid in Islamabad, which was very unfortunate. And I'm glad that the, the Pakistani military took a very strong and decisive stand. Um, there are some, there, there's a need for some serious thinking about on how to approach uh, extremism in Pakistan and how to really further invest in building education, moderation, and civil society in Pakistan, both by our friends in Pakistan, but also the international community, United States, and many other countries in Europe. On the question of, of Iran, uh, your, your other border, uh, there's been a lot of allegation uh, made by the United States and others recently that uh, Iran is, is using uh, its, its operatives in some of its munitions uh, against the United States uh, in league with the Taliban, its old enemy, to destabilize the Afghan government. Um, are these assessments in line with, with your own? Uh, and if so, what evidence uh, has really come out about this? One of the important achievements of the Afghan foreign policy has been to engage countries in our neighborhood who have different priorities, um, different foreign policies in a constructive way in Afghanistan, Iran, China, some Central Asian republics have been cooperating in the reconstruction process in Afghanistan, despite the differences that they have in the United States. Uh, Iran has been playing a constructive role in Afghanistan for the past five and a half years. We are hearing the reports about uh, some of the uh, delivery of the weapon and others to some elements in Afghanistan. We are monitoring these reports and evaluating them. We are concerned. We hope that they are not true. Uh, we think, again, that like in case of Pakistan, stability in Afghanistan will benefit Iran, and we need to have good relation with Iran. But you consider those reports as yet unconfirmed? In an in a environment of, of war like it is in Afghanistan, where the country is awash with, with all kind of weapons because of the 30 years of violence, it is, you wouldn't be surprised if you find uh, weapons made on almost anywhere, anywhere in the world. Mm. So we have to, if we find these kind of weapons, we have to make sure that we trace them to, to the government or to other official elements outside Afghanistan, and that requires a lot more work. Um, something our readers are very interested in that's come to the fore over the last several weeks uh, is the question of civilian casualties uh, in NATO operations. It's something that President Karzai has called uh, unacceptable. He said that he can't put up with it any longer. I, I wonder uh, to what degree you feel that uh, the U.S. and NATO forces are, are sufficiently uh, taken with this problem. There's been a U.S. brigade commander who in, in, in May apologized uh, for, for some uh, unintended consequences of military action. Um, to what degree can, can U.S. and NATO forces uh, avoid this issue in a greater uh, capacity than they have so far? It is a serious problem and it is completely unacceptable to the Afghan people, to the Afghan president, to the Afghan parliament, the fact that, that civilians are dying in large number in Afghanistan. Of course, the Taliban are also hiding among civilians. And, and in a war, it is impossible to prevent completely any kind of civilian casualties or, or collateral damage. And if it happens, and we, in, in some cases we will never be able to prevent it, then we have to make sure that we go to the village, we go to the elders and say, we are sorry. Or if you cannot legally, if you cannot say we are sorry, 
because you might be admitting guilt or something like that. Turns out we regret the fact that took place. That's not what we meant. This is because you have to respect the dignity of the people. And, and, and that's all it takes. Uh, I don't think anybody will be suing someone for, 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 for damages to their home. That's not part of the culture. But they deserve the dignity of an apology or a regret. Is there a problem right now with, with the lack of coordination that, that you cite contributing to collateral damage? And if so, uh, should the United States and NATO take a little bit of, 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 a, of its foot off, off the gas when it comes to joint operations with the Afghan security forces? Well, uh, the, 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 the problem is, is coming due to the fact that we have the asset of having so many countries willing to be involved in Afghanistan to assist with the military missions. Particularly, coordination in the local level is very crucial. That is not taking place so much. More reliance on, on human intelligence. Some of the operations might be compromised if you rely a lot on human intelligence locally, but you prevent uh, bigger damages if you use more human intelligence and if you have small, more mobile forces to deploy. When you get a report of a Taliban or a terrorist in a small village, send a small group of commanders with helicopters to go there and catch him. He will be more of, of, of intelligence value than just bombing that, that house and, and, and thereby uh, risking uh, killing other people who might be in the neighborhood. One of the, you mentioned intelligence, one of the more controversial uh, questions about the U.S.-Afghan relationship concerns intelligence and particularly concerns human rights abuses. Uh, the United States at Bagram Air Base, it's been reported, uh, maintains uh, an intelligence uh, facility, uh, some of which some people have called it a secret prison, uh, known as the Salt Pit in particular, that was a CIA facility. To what degree is the Afghan government informed about uh, American intelligence operations that may involve human rights abuses? No, we, we are not part of that. This is, uh, we, we, we are not uh, informed about uh, what is going on inside these, these prisons, but of course, uh, like a normal U.S. citizen, like an Afghan or those who are like your partner, we do share the concern when, when the images of the United States or the images of a professional institution like the U.S. Army is, 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 is impacted by these things. I, I think that the U.S. Army is, is a professional institution. There might be some individuals that have committed atrocities like in Abu Ghraib, or, 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 but these are exceptions to the rule. And I think what is happening in Afghanistan is not so much different as far as the legal issues are concerned from what is taking place in Guantanamo Bay and other places. We, are, we have been forced to face this extreme danger and challenge of terrorism. And, and, and some of the existing legal frameworks are not adequate to, to, to fight terrorism effectively and efficiently. We have to find better ways for it. Well, is your government satisfied with what it knows and what it's allowed to know about potential human rights abuses that occur on its soil at no, the hands of... of we, we, if, if, there, if there has been particular cases, we have made our concern known to the U.S. government, and, and we have also, in, in instances where needed, we have we thought that someone has to be released. We have made a request, and they have been released on, both from Afghanistan and even from Guantanamo Bay and other places. If we thought that, that their release will add better to the stability process in Afghanistan, we have requested that. And also, um, all of the Afghan detainees in Guantanamo Bay will soon be transferred to Afghanistan. One last question. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, an enormous preoccupation uh, with, with Afghanistan from the perspective of the international community, it's something our, our readers are very concerned about as well, is uh, the amount of narco trafficking that occurs, the, the poppy problem, and uh, something that, that's been out there for a while as, as a rumor and as an allegation is that President Karzai's brother, uh, in Kandahar is involved uh, in, 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 the, in poppy smuggling and opium production and so forth. First, as an overview, uh, why haven't uh, opium eradica eradication efforts uh, borne fruit? And secondly, uh, is there a real problem with the president's brother possibly being involved in this activity directly? Um, as far as um, lack of significant progress in fight against narcotics, as you mentioned, the issue is that uh, the international community is focusing a lot on eradication only, which is one aspect of fighting narcotics. In order to fight narcotics effectively in Afghanistan, we have to focus on alternative livelihood. Just by eradicating the poppy fields, we are not going to be able to solve the problem of poppy in Afghanistan. If you give a choice in life and death to a farmer, he will, he will choose life even if it's illegal. You have to give them a, 
a dignified uh, choice for, for, for life. As far as allegation against uh, President Karzai or his brother, you know very well in political environments anywhere in the world, people are trying to get to the president in any way that they can. These so are, these allegations are purely so political? These are baseless. If, 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 these, if there is any, any validity to these allegations, they should come up with a proof. If, as the president have asked in the past, is, is, if anybody is, is, is able to provide any type of evidence, well, I can assure you that the president of Afghanistan is very committed. He's, he's, he's probably the most ethical leader that we had ever had in Afghanistan, or, or, or even in the region that we have right now. So, so why have we not heard a flat denial of these allegations? The, because, because we never have pro been provided with, with an evidence that's saying that yeah, this is the evidence that he's doing. These, some of these allegations are not really even worth by be, being, being denied by the president unless he sees uh, uh, no, clear evidence. Uh, as I mentioned, the president is, is very, very committed. If there is any evidence on, on any kind of wrongdoing by, by anyone, including his member of family, he, is, he will take action. Well, thanks so much for watching. Uh, we thank so, so much uh, Ambassador so Jawad for giving us time out of his busy, busy schedule to address uh, a lot of our questions and a lot of the questions that you kindly uh, wrote in to make sure that, that were heard uh, in such an important setting. Uh, for TPM-TV, I'm Spencer Ackerman. Thanks for watching.